What's going on everyone? My name is Eric and this is the Get Me Out of Here vlog. It is a cold and snowy day here in January in Northwest Iowa. And I am standing outside Little Swan Lake Winery. It's a phenomenal winery located a few miles east of the Iowa Great Lakes, the Okaboji, Iowa region. And it's been here for almost 20 years. They're celebrating their 20th year in business this year in 2022. So I thought I'd stop by. There's some special live music going on and they also serve buffalo steaks and buffalo burgers. There is a buffalo ranch here as well. He raises buffaloes and processes some of the meat. So you can not only enjoy fresh wine, you can also enjoy fresh buffalo burgers, burgers and steaks as well. So join me today as I bring you on a tour of this hidden gem here in Iowa. Yes, Iowa has wineries and here is one of the best. This is Little Swan Lake Winery. Follow me as I show you around. They even have a bed and breakfast here as well. So you could stay a weekend, kind of a beautiful weekend getaway here at an exotic Buffalo Ranch winery. Follow me. This area got about a foot of snow a few days ago. And the temperature when I drove in to the Iowa Great Lakes region last night was negative two degrees Fahrenheit. It has warmed up since then. It's it's uh, just about 32 degrees out. So a lot of these icicles are melting. And a lot of the snow is starting to melt as well. But they, winter caught up with them. I, I was here for Christmas, not much snow on the ground at all, but they got dumped on this last week, about a foot of snow here in Northwestern Iowa. So 20 years ago, this barn stood here and it was turned into the actual winery shop. And there is a small restaurant and stage inside. And actually this tower was added on about 10 years ago. That is now part of the bed and breakfast inside. I will show you a tour here in a little bit. They've really turned this place around. It's gorgeous. You can see they've got the deck. So in the warmer season, summertime and into the fall, uh, you could sit outside, drink on the deck. Often there's live music outside as well, but since it's January, we're gonna be heading inside to enjoy the entertainment and drinks. I will say this hill here is a little bit treacherous in the winter time. A lot of ice. And uh, this is a ranch, pretty much in the middle of nowhere, Northwest Iowa. It's a couple miles east of the Okaboji, Iowa, the Iowa Great Lakes region. And I just stepped into like a foot of snow here. So I'm gonna have wet socks later today. Off in the distance there, you can see the buffalo on the snowy hillside. I'll have to ask how many he currently has. It looks like a decent amount of buffalo there. I was going to say grazing on the hillside, but there's a lot of snow. I don't think, I don't know if they're grazing or not this time of year. But there you have it. There is the live buffalo ranch right next to the winery. And will you look at that rounding my way behind the winery itself are even more buffalo. A little bit of a closer look of the buffalo here at Little Swan Lake Winery. Dozens of them hanging out here in the cold, doing a little grazing. What's going on, guys? Yeah, look at that, buffalo in Iowa. You know, it's funny, oftentimes you associate wineries with the spring or summer season, but here in Iowa, you can enjoy it in the winter time. Like I said, I'll give you a tour of the inside of the actual winery itself. I'm gonna see if we can't get access down below to where the magic happens, where the wine is made and where it's bottled. And also the bed and breakfast here as well is absolutely gorgeous. I'm hoping I can get access to show all of you exactly what this place has in store. So follow me, let's go head inside Little Swan Lake Winery. 
I've got some personal history here as well, if I don't fall on my face in the snow. So I actually have some personal experience at this winery 10 years ago in the fall of 2012. I actually worked here a couple times and helped bottle wine. Got a couple free bottles of wine out of the ordeal. So I'm hoping I can get downstairs, share some stories. And I've heard that my name is written on a wall somewhere, which I don't remember. So I guess we'll see if that's true or not. But yeah, I actually worked here 10 years ago, just you know, just one or a couple times, just a handful of times. But it was a really fun experience seeing the wine making process and helping bottle wine here at Little Swan Lake. So yeah, gotta love the weather vane that they have above the winery as well. It's got a buffalo on it. Fitting for the theme here. So here's the special music today. It's my dad, of all people. He's playing guitar. He and his friend Ryan, who's on the keyboards. And uh, we've got front and center seats. I'm here hanging out with my mom. And we've got a, a bottle of Cabernet that we're going to start out with right here. So this is Little Swan Lake Wine. They make all kinds of different flavors, red wine and white wine. We're going to start with the Cabernet. And I'll listen to my dad play for a little bit. And then I'll hopefully get a tour to show everyone what the winery looks like and what some of the bed and breakfast rooms look like. But until then, cheers, Mom. Oh, cheers. Yeah. Absolutely. Cheers. Rock on, Dave. All right. We will be back in a bit. So while my dad is tuning his guitar, I do love this Little Swan Lake Winery logo that they have on the makeshift stage. You can see the swan in flight. Well, kind of in flight, I guess landing. Swan dive. And here's another closer look of the wine we are currently trying. This is the Cabernet. And they've been here for 20 years. The vineyards outside are obviously covered in snow, so I won't be touring the actual vineyards on this film. But we will hopefully get to see the bottling process downstairs and where, where the wine is made. I know it. And then the nice thing is, then I'm off schedule again as of next month. Um, and I'm not great on this But in March, they ship it to the And in April, they ship it to the Every good winery has to have their winery shop. And here is the inside of the barn. This is the shop. You can get all types of wine, wine souvenirs, t-shirts. A lot of great things to browse here. Take a look at this too. They've even got the little Swan Lake winery glasses that you can purchase. The Buffalo Blush. Look at all of the awards they've won over the years. The wine here is phenomenal. By far one of the greatest wineries in the Midwest. You know, here's one of the awards here, a Taste of History, People's Choice Award, first place, Hy-Vee Grocery Store. So I wasn't lying when I said this is one of the greatest wineries the Midwest has. It is a hidden gem here in Northwest Iowa. And they make all sorts of wine. You can see they got summer peach. This is a moon nut Moscato. Never had anything like that before. Buffalo blush, that looks to be a popular one. Jazzberry, strawberry jam, they got sweet wines, red wines, white wines, you name it. And what's cool is they also sell West O, that's a local brewery in Okaboji. It's an award-winning brewery here in Northwest Iowa. They actually sell West O beer here at the winery. And if you go to the West O brewery, they also sell Little Swan Lake wine at the brewery too. Gotta love the Godfather look here. A few red wines. The Cabernet is excellent. That's one of my personal favorites. Pretty much all sold out of that right now. Um, Gotta love the opera singing buffalo as well, the Petite Syrah and the Cé Blanc. Not really sure what's going on. I love, I love the labels there. It's almost like Monty Python and the Holy Grail, but with like a space laser gun looking swan. I don't know. 
really can't go wrong with anything here. Another one of my favorites, and it's a popular wine here, is the 29. It's a red wine, but this is a very popular one with customers. Really can't go wrong here at Little Swan Lake. I just realized, too, they sell puzzles of the wine labels here. Very cool. Here in the cooler, they've got buffalo meat that you can take home. Buffalo jerky. Buffalo sticks. And buffalo burgers. Look at these prices, too. You can't beat that. $2.15. And everything is processed here. This is fresh buffalo meat. What a deal. Look at that. He's been selling a lot of it too. The cooler's already almost empty. You gotta love this sign. I dream of a world where chickens can cross the road without having their motives questioned. <laughs> it's a deep psychological question. They've got fridge magnets here as well. I'm gonna have to take that one home. I absolutely love the Godfather Buffalo wine label. They've got that in fridge magnet form and uh, quite a few other ones here too. Taking in all the t-shirts that they've got for sale and I couldn't help but notice they've got one here. Home of the trumpet playing winemaker. That is Scott, the owner of this winery and he is known to break out the trumpet. So we will see if Scott makes a trumpet appearance. He is here today. Um, let's see if he actually breaks the trumpet out and plays a little bit. I appreciate the support of these guys and us and enjoy yourselves and let's basically have some wine and some food and some fun. Thank you. Woo! That's Scott, the owner, waiting for the trumpet. Go to the country. Build you a home, build you a home, plant a little garden, plant a little garden, eat a lot of peaches, eat a lot of peaches, try and find cheese, try and find cheese, on your own, on your own. So the dinner special tonight is shepherd's pie with buffalo meat. Looks absolutely delicious. Still got the live music going too. It's pretty loud, so hopefully you can hear all this. But yeah, shepherd's pie with buffalo meat. Try to be quick because the music's loud. It's good stuff. But anyway, this is shepherd's pie with buffalo meat. Mm. Absolutely phenomenal. The wine is great, of course. I've got some of that too, so cheers everyone. But the food here at Little Swan Lake Winery is exceptional. Definitely come out, see a show, enjoy some wine, and enjoy some incredible buffalo meat source food. Cheers.
So I am with one of the owners here. She is giving me a personal tour of the winery and the bed and breakfast portion. We're going to start with the bed and breakfast rooms above the stage. Oh, this is cozy. Yeah. Oh, this is really nice. We got some more steps. And what year did you guys build onto this? I'm trying to remember. Was it 10 years ago? At least 10, 10 or 11. 10 or 11 years. Look at the buffalo theming that they have. And the uh, just the, the construction here is gorgeous. It's very Western style. Oh, cool. Whoops. Turn it off. The buffalo light. Oh, look at this. This is so cool. So these are bed and breakfast. You can you can stay for the weekends. Yeah, whenever. Weekdays, whenever. Um, and you have how many different suites or rooms? There are two units here and one unit across the bar. Wow. I love this. Yeah. That is so cool, the stairwell. And here we go. This is the buffalo room. The buffalo room. I can tell. Oh wow, look at that tub. That is so cool. That is a deep tub. Yeah, soaking tub. Very cool. It's a very Wild West theme. And uh, you got some more buffalo paintings on the walls, some Native American. Is there poetry or? Yes, it is a poem. There's a poem on there. And uh, just look how it's awesome. Where are the buffalo gone? Oh, okay. So where have the buffalo gone? A poem and they've got um, just really cool theming. I love the, like in the wood sink. Um, you've got this divider here, this wooden divider for the, the toilet, some more buffalo theming. And uh, the, uh, this tub is so cool, I gotta say. Perfect for a romantic getaway here at Little Swan Lake. Very cool. Can, go up too, can we go up? Yeah, I would love to. Let's do that. Go up the winding staircase. How long did the construction take here? It took about a year. Ooh. You got a telescope for stargazing or looking at the buffalo herd at night, maybe. <laughs> the <laughs> buffalo herd is straight ahead. There's actually a three-sided deck here. So really? So the um, telescope can go outside. And that is so cool. Look at the stars. So you can have a romantic getaway. You can gaze at the stars with your lover. You can soak yourself in that awesome western tub and enjoy some amazing bottles of wine here at Little Swan Lake. Awesome, fantastic, thank you. Yeah. All right, let's see how well I can walk down this stairwell after having, I won't say how many glasses of wine tonight. Mm -hmm. I told him it should be a slide instead of steps. <laughs> it should have been a slide. That would have, been, that would have made way more sense. So if you want to book a room here at this beautiful winery and getaway, you go to the Little Swan Lake Winery website to book your stay. LSL Winery. LSLWinery.com. And you can stay at this amazing rustic getaway. All right, well now that you've seen the B&B, &B, we're gonna go take a look at the actual winery and show you where the magic happens. So now we are heading to the actual well, where the magic happens, I've got Scott here, the owner of the winery, and he's going to show us around the actual bottling room and where the wine is made. And I still can't believe, Scott, it was like 10 years ago, I think, now that I was bottling with you guys uh, for a couple times. No idea when it was. <laughs> I think it was fall 2012, which, yeah, time flies. But here we are. This is the, the bottling room. So here we are. This is where the magic happens. And uh, yeah, I recognize the counter here. And this is where they bottle the wine. You can see, what's that? Oh, there it is. <laughs> I can't. I'll get people calling me all the time. Yeah, my number may or may not be on that, but my name. So there you are, there is my name. A little blurry. And the names of 
Other people that have bottled wine here at Little Swan Lake Winery. That was back in 2012, which is hard to believe. And there are people on here that have moved away. Yeah. There are people on here that are dead. Really? Yeah. I'm not one of the dead ones, but yeah, really. Well, no, I the people have passed. Yeah, there's but, people have passed, but so, they, they loved working here and they loved helping, and, and, and you, so their name was on there. And, been gone for years. And you've been here for, is it 20 years now yeah. you've had the winery? Yeah. So 20 years of people working here, they've all written their names uh, here on the tape, and then you got a big bag full of corks. Yep, these start off being a thousand corks. Wow. And this is where I have left total, so I have 5,000 more coming. Okay. So oh yeah, I recognize this. in a bag. And this is where the magic happens. So the, can you... Step me through the process here real yeah, quick. This so is the bottling machine. Okay. And basically I suck out the tank in through the filter and it goes in the tank. And then you put the bottles on here and there's six spouts and they'll fill so it's done. And then they'll stop. That's right. So you can just leave. I mean, you know, you put them on there and leave unless you screw up and they're fine. They'll stop. I, I never screwed up. No, Back I'm in the sure. day, I, I, <laughs> we made it work. No, you're, no, your dad would not. <laughs> corker, this is air powered. You just put the bottle in there, stuff on the pedal, and it pushes the cork in. The, the backup corker, which is not the same. I don't remember the backup cork. Is that well, new? Well, we didn't have the backup corker until we actually needed it. And it's like, why not just put it there? Right, right. And then the labeler, labels are in rolls. I mean, you have some rolls of labels. Uh huh. Okay. Labels are in rolls. You put the bottle on here, pull on the tail, you see the label start to show up. Yep. And then you just roll the bottle. And then the capsule on top is decorative. The very top capsule doesn't really do anything, it just looks good. And so there's two different kinds, and one is a shrink wrap. It's a plastic capsule. And oh, sure. In the heating coil in, on the bottle, and it just shrinks it. Okay. And then the other kind is a, a foil one, and there's a machine that basically spins it down tight. And so our better wines, I just feel like people deserve a better capsule. But my last order, and they come from Spain, my last order didn't go through. So we're just putting plastic ones on everything. Right so now. the capsules come from Spain? Those do. The wow. The ones do. Yeah. That's amazing. The ones that have the, the labeling, I mean, you see a couple over here. The ones that have the ALSL on them, they come from Spain. That's amazing. And you said your son designs Every, the actual labels? He designed all the labels. Yeah. Very cool. And that's been fun because, first of all, it's all email because he's too far away. Right. So you just tell them you need a label, you have no idea what you're getting, and you don't mess with artists. You just don't mess with artists. <laughs> you get what you get, and you get a couple of choices, and you say this one. That's it. You heard it here, folks. Do not mess with artists. You just don't mess with artists. Okay, now here's some, some new stuff. All four of these, actually all six of these down here, are, are new stuff from this fall. So these are wines that are just done fermenting. The lids are on. If you look in, you can see a lid, and it just sits on top of the wine. Oh, wow. And then you pump up the seal. Wow. So it, it doesn't matter how full it is, it's safe. Okay. Okay. You could I can definitely smell it too. It, My next step it's very now sweet. is you actually make all these wines cold because they have a substance in them called potassium bitartrate. Okay. And if you make it cold, it crystallizes and falls to the bottom. And then the big wineries take that to the food companies and it becomes cream of tartar. Oh. So it's tasteless, it's harmless, but it looks like broken glass. Interesting. And I might have some, Diane has saved some here. Here's the tartrates from the bottom of the tank. Wow. And basically, like you say, if that's ground up, it's cream of tartar. Wow. It's just, it yeah. like oats almost. Yeah. It's kind of like grape nuts. Yeah, well, it is. Grape nuts cereal. 
And so I got to get these all out in the back end and open the door and make them cold for a couple of weeks. And then that falls out so it doesn't fall out in the bottle. Okay. You want it in the tank and clean it out and then it doesn't happen in the bottle. Okay, here's one that we just bottled and we have more to go. That's this one. So we bottled some, we got more to go. Uh, this is this fall's grapes. This is this fall's juice. It's just a little bit of everything down here. And these are all boxes of bottled wine. Yeah, bottled wine. Wow. Delicious little Swan Lake Winery wine, ready to go. And then these are, when I get a lot of my New York stuff, it comes in blue plastic barrels. Yeah. And if I clean them, I get 40 bucks back. Really? Then they reuse them. What do you mean by New York stuff? What? Well, I, actually I buy a lot of my whites, the Rieslings, the Vignoles, I, a lot of different stuff from New York. Okay. And it comes in either a big bulk tank, and they pump it into my tank, or barrels uh -huh. in 60 gallon, gallon quantities. Okay. And so they just unload the barrels, and that's, you know, then I, like I say, I, I spend 40 bucks, and if I clean them out, I get 40 bucks back. That's great. That's yeah. so good. Back good here, deal. this is last fall's grapes. You can kind of look at the dates. Okay, you got and the it was pressed and then pressed in 2021. This is great from California. Oh, okay. Okay, and empties actually bottle wine because it's all labeled or whatever it is. This is New York, um, 120 gallons to start with. This from this fall. Okay, here's a 2021 San Giovese from California. Just a little, some of everything is where it wants to. So the grape, do all your grapes come from California? Or you the, the actually reds. The reds. The okay. reds do. Okay. Because they can, I mean, there's a better. Mm -hmm. Because they got the growing season. Right. They can do all that stuff. And, right. And we can't, and New York can't, and... Yeah, they can grow some of these, but it's not as good. But you do the whites here, though. In I, pr I process everything here. Okay, got it. I don't grow anything anymore. But you used to. I did. Okay. Yeah, but it was not worth it. Gotcha. I was wasting my time. The Northern Iowa weather. Uh huh. Yes. Okay. Here's the Cabernet from California this fall. I got two tons of cab. That stuff was so delicious about today, too. 300 gallons in there. A ton of grapes makes about 150 gallons of wine. Okay. Okay. This one is in our one of our new wines, and I had two barrels of 2010 Sangiovese, which has been in a barrel for 10 years. Wow. And one That's of the barrels nice. went in the new Italian blend, the gondolier, and the other one is ready, I'll just bottle it as 2010 Sangiovese. So it's been 10 years, like I say. Barrels. That's amazing. So you, it's been here for 10 years? Been in barrels. In barrels for 10 years? Barrels for 10 years. It just got put in here. Wow. Right at the end of December. So when do you plan to bottle something like that? As soon as I get labels. Okay. And they are ordered and approved and on their way. Interesting. Whenever on their way it means. Yeah. <laughs> it could mean a lot of different things. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Should be soon. Should be within a week or two. And then basically back here, again, whatever you do, don't show the floor, but because I got leakage, but oh, sure. this is this is Ooh. the green elevator now. We're in the green elevator. And this is my barrel rooms. And a lot of these now, because I just emptied them, are empty. So here's the San Giovese, the one in the gondolier and the other one. They're empty. One of the Nebbiolos is empty. I got Petit Verdot to bottle. I got Syrah to bottle. And I got one barrel bar barrel to bottle. And again, that's bottles, or labels. Labels, okay. Yep, and they're on the way. Back here. We have 
one of our main blends is called 29. And there's five barrels of 29 here. And as soon as the labels show up, we can bottle. These are all empties, rinsed, but not sterile. Okay. So, so they'll be gone. They'll be for sale. They'll be breaking apart for furniture. I mean, you name it. So there's five back here, four empties. And the 29 is one of your more popular ones, it correct? Is. It is, yeah. We sell a lot of 29. Okay. We do. And 29 is a blend of several different reds. And each year is a little different. And then this one has been in here that long. Wow. It's been two years. And each of the wines in the 29 has already spent one year in a barrel by uh -huh. itself. So it will have spent three years plus in barrel oh, besides. That's so. pre, uh, pre Corona right there. October <laughs> 2019. Uh, yeah. It's been quarantining that long. Great. Yeah, it's been quarantined. You're right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Free from the right. Yeah. That's basically what's going on. I used to have a lot more barrels full, but I used to do a lot more reds every fall. Um, and then now I'm kind of basically space and sales, and I'm kind of a little more selective of what I choose. S some things don't go well. What this was that? A, this is a Brianna, a local Brianna. And when I got them, they were already almost soft and squishy and not good. So that might end up going to a distillery and turn into brandy. Ah, recycling. Because distil <laughs> the distillery basically has to ferment something first. Right. And then they distill it. Then they get rid of the water. And so if I sell them this stuff, it saves them a step. Okay. Fascinating. And we have done that once already with some some wine of ours. And they made brandy and then we put that brandy in our port. Ah. So we're kinda we are actually it's kind of this circle kind of a thing and I just gotta get him some stuff and see what happens. The circle of life. I did. Yeah. Wine. yeah. <laughs> Eagle of V. Here, I now finally, last winter, did my, did my vertical, basically, vertical choices, you know, several years of each one. Very nice. And that was, that was fun to get that finally done. And you just, you said this past year is when you finally got this yeah, organized? Yeah, finally, last winter, I finally That's did That's great. This. Yeah. Been wanting to do that for years and years and years and sort them out because otherwise all they are is a heap. Oh, it's I just see. a heap. Yeah. And so this winter maybe if I get to it I'll do some more on this wall and continue because I got a bunch that I didn't have room for. And here's your famous 29. Yep. Different years. Yep. 2024. 24. I've got to decide if I'm going to do it. Five, six, seven. Because it has the buffalo head on the picture. There you go. Oh, that is classic. So that is the 29 of my yeah, 2005. Camera wants to focus there. there. There we go. There it is. That is the 29, one of the more popular wines. Very cool. All right. But that was fun to finally get that done. Because you get a 5 Syrah, 6 Syrah, 7 Syrah, 8 Syrah, 8 Syrah, single girl, so that, you know, just that sort of thing. It's, it was fun to get that done. Yeah, no, it looks great. It looks really nice. Well organized. Pretty cool. All right, well. Well, there you have it, folks. This is where the magic happens. Scott, thank you for very much for uh, taking me on a tour here. Thank you so um, much. Like I said, this is one of the greatest wineries, Little Swan Lake, here in the Midwest United States. Maybe the coal country, but uh, I might be a little biased here, too. I, I helped bottle many years ago, but I absolutely love coming here. Scott, thank you very much. Keep up the good work. And uh, if anybody watching this, come out to Iowa. Come stop by here at Little Swan Lake and enjoy some of the best wine of the Midwest. Thank you much. <laughs> So there's a story behind these snowshoes talking to Scott the owner. He said he actually made these snowshoes, cut the got the wood from a tree that he cut down on his property and he actually made the leather from the buffalo here. So he did every single part of creating these snowshoes that are on display here at the winery. You can see they've got some buffalo hide right here too. 
You can sit at the table here and cozy up to some real buffalo hide taken from the ranch. Perfect for a Midwestern winter, staying warm. Well, the music has ended, the food has been eaten, the wine has been, been pretty much all drinking. I've got a little bit of wine left. Wanted to say cheers to everyone watching. If you're ever in Iowa, come here to Little Swan Lake Winery. It is a gem here in the heartland, and it will be an experience that you'll always remember. And they've also got an amazing bed and breakfast too, so you can enjoy a getaway, a romantic getaway, have a lot of wine, a lot of great music, and some great buffalo meat as well. So this is Eric with the Get Me Out of Here vlog. Thanks for watching. It's time for me to get out of here. See you, Scott. Ha, ha, ha.